Hey everybody, it's Miss Sibet. I'm the College and Career Counselor here at Newton South. And I hope you're beginning to enjoy your summer and get some downtime away from the hecticness of high school. Um, today I'm going to do a presentation, um, which is our final one in a co college planning series on how you can use summer to plan for your college applications and just an understanding of the college process a little bit more. So in the past, um, we've had topics on junior parent night. Um, we've had information on standardized testing, including information on test optional strategies um, with colleges. We've also had the junior college panel where we had admissions reps um, asking them a variety of questions um, regarding trends in college admissions. And uh, we also had um, a speaker from Curry College discuss students with learning disabilities and the college process. So um, those are accessible. Most of those um, were recorded programs that you would be able to access on the College and Career Center webpage. Um, and I hope you'll, you'll do that throughout the summer as well. Um, this program um, will also be available on the website um, as soon as um, we're done recording it. Um, so whether you watch it in full or just pop in and out and watch it um, throughout the summer, I hope that the information will be helpful to you. So um, I do have um, a number of slides I'm gonna go through. So I am gonna shut off my video so that you really focus on the information that I am discussing. So. Here we go. All right, folks, so here's our agenda. Um, we're gonna be just talking a little bit about um, my thoughts on the college process, um, self-assessment, creating your list, researching your college options, completing applications, essays, testing and recommendations, college affordability and financial aid and resources that I recommend. Okay, so just a little thought on the process. Um, I would say is just to give yourself some time without jumping in right away and creating a list and um, starting your application and writing your essay is to really just reflect a little bit on um, you know, why you're applying to college, if applying to college is, is the right next step. Um, spend some time doing some self-assessment to kind of get to know yourself a little bit. Um, I really believe that an organized and thoughtful approach to the college application process um, will make for better decisions down the road. It also requires your time, your investment and in being realistic with yourself. Um, an important first step is to reflect and understand um, what your interests are, what your skills and aptitudes are, and um, get a sense of the perception of college you have. Um, and this is all gonna help shape the types of college you, colleges you do or don't apply to. Um, you wanna consider if you are emotionally and academically prepared for college. Um, college is number one in academic pursuit. So you wanna ask yourself why you wanna go to college. What do you hope to gain from the experience? Be very realistic with yourself. Um, you want to look at what criteria, criteria you will use to determine colleges which are good for you. Um, and that would be like kind of thinking about the size, location, the cost, what student life is like, the academic challenge. So a good college is not the well-known or popular school. It is the school that meets your needs. So my thoughts, take some time, reflect. Um, and I have some yeah. self-assessment self exercises I want you to take a look at. Okay, so the first exercise that I want you to take a look at is going to help you understand why you do or don't want to attend college, right? It's gonna require reflection and self-awareness. So my first thing I would have you do is to begin your summer with this online exercise. Um, this was created by Dr. Steve Antonoff, who's been an expert in college list development for over 30 years. Um, 
you're going to go to this website here. If you just click the box and schoolbuff.com, the link will take you right to the exercise. Um, there you're going to find questions about your attitudes, goals, and reasons for attending college. Your responses will point you in a direction of the type of college setting that's going to fit you. So after all, the process of college planning is not about getting in, it is about completing an academic degree and a place where you're going to grow as a person and as a student. So take time to respond. You wanna have uninterrupted time to get through these questions and keep your phone out of reach. To get the best feedback, you will want to respond with truthful and realistic answers. Don't be answering it in the, you know, the person you think you'll be in five years or 10 years, answer it as you are the person today. Um, the information is gonna provide you with a foundation to begin developing your college list. And you can see here, the categories are gonna help assess your readiness to be a college student. So some of the categories are your enthusiasm for school, your effect, affection for knowledge, your level of independence, uh, self-understanding, and just your eagerness to go to college. So that's one exercise. The next exercise, same thing, you're gonna click on the link here in this box, schoolbuff.com. You can either complete this on paper or as a fillable PDF for you to save. The questions are gonna help you build a college profile with care characteristics from the schools that match you best. This will help you also create a list of colleges that are just right for you. Answer for yourself, not for your friends, your family, or well-meaning relatives. Um, here's a sampling of what some of the types of qualities have to offer at school. So activities, location, um, you know, is, is the school, does it feel comfortable? Do you feel like you could fit in there? Do you think you can see yourself as being academically successful there? Is there enough variety of offerings or does it have the academic offerings or major that you're interested in? Um, okay. So those two exercises I think are gonna lead you to now like being able to create a list. And I just wanna talk about some of the, the resources to help you do that. Um, so when we think about college characteristics, you know, I'm hoping that the results of those, those exercises you do um, are going to help you um, kind of look at a college in three categories of fit. So does it fit me academically? One. Two, does it fit me socially? And three, is it a financial fit? Um, so knowing your criteria, you should use a couple of college search engines to develop an initial list is my recommendation. Your list may be bigger in this phase of exploration, or um, you know, it, it, I would try and keep it to you know not to go above twenty schools at any time as you research schools. You know, more than twenty is just really overwhelming. Um, you can see here in number one um, some online resources that that could help you. Um, college search engines is the big future on College Board, collegeexpress.com, uh, collegedata.com, and obviously Naviance, which you all have access to. Um, over the past few months, uh, we've had um, some visits with college reps in the spring with juniors. And in the fall, as seniors, we expect to welcome our reps uh, in person to meet with you. Uh, typically, we have over 250 different colleges that are represented, represented from the United States um, as well as internationally. Um, and it's really important hearing firsthand about the college and being able to answer your specific questions. Um, so it can really help you, you know, either refine your list or add a school to a list or take another school off the list. So that firsthand contact with, um, with the admissions reps who represent 
um, whose territory is Newton and Newton South, um, really um, is an important aspect of, of your research. So I encourage you to um, participate in that in the fall. Um, and um, you will be able to check Naviance through the summer um, under colleges, college visits, um, to see who's added throughout the summer because they, they, they do do that. Um, over the past six years, I've also accumulated um, a number of alumni who have graduated from Newton South who um, have volunteered to share information about their colleges, their advice and college application tips. This can be helpful when you're trying to reduce your number of schools to a manageable number. This will vary by individuals, but the goal is to apply to no more than 12 or less schools. Uh, additionally, another way to help with the creating of a list um, in the College and Career Center, we have a number of uh, current editions of guidebooks um, from College Board, from the FISC guide. There's an organization called Colleges That Change Lives, which really focus on smaller, strictly undergraduate um, institutions. Um, I'd encourage you next year, if you have a free block, to stop by the College and Career Center and, and take a look. Um, additionally, you could do some research by, you know, looking at the content on college websites, such as virtual tours, info sessions, and student panels. Um, this information is where you can start with your research and will likely determine if you want to possibly schedule an in-person visit in the future. Students who take their time and put in the effort to do this phase of research are often the most satisfied with their college lists and outcomes. As a timeline, if you have fall deadlines and are applying to schools with early action, early decision, rolling or pri priority app admissions, I suggest that you have a list of no more than 12 colleges by early to mid-September. And if you're applying to colleges with deadlines in January and beyond um, to have a list um, by early to mid-November. Okay, so with a list of up to 12, uh, which meet the criteria and qualities that you want and need, you will move to the very important research phase of college planning. Okay, the first thing you should know is that you will get a lot of mail and emails from colleges. And while email is likely not your preferred form of communication, you need to understand that it is for colleges. Make it a habit to check your email frequently when you're applying to college. Also be sure your email is appropriate to conduct your college business. Uh, an email like I love pinkberry at gmail.com is not, it's not a bad image, but it's not an image you necessarily wanna have when communicating with prospective colleges. So I suggest creating a simple name oriented email that you will use for all college correspondence as well as your applications. And one important thing is be sure your email in Navion, so your login email is the same email that you use for your applications or in corresponding with um, admissions representatives. Um, so this first bullet here, sign up to receive information and updates via email. This way you will be first to know when a college is um, offering any particular admissions events, um, getting on an email list also demonstrates an increased level of interest from you, which appeals to many colleges. Um, start your exploration online first, um, as the amount of information is robust, especially since uh, the pandemic uh, forced us into kind of a virtual world. So um, the quality of the information colleges are putting out on their websites virtually is, is, is outstanding. Naviance has college general information, historical data related to Newton South students, and will also link you to college websites. You want to go to the Colleges I'm Thinking About section um, to help you organize the schools which have sparked your interest. You're there you can add the schools, you can delete schools, but it can just be kind of like your working list. College websites have information which matters to you as well. Remember your exercises that you did at the beginning 
and look for where and if the school fits who you are as a student and what matters to you. Look at the courses in different majors, check out residence halls, look at clubs, read, on, read the online newspaper if that's available. Um, while more colleges are welcoming prospective students and families to campus once again for in-person tours, you should start with a virtual tour to acquaint yourself. Um, also on campus visiting is not always an option for students and families and colleges know this. So at a minimum, watching a school's tour virtually uh, from the comfort of your, your home and your computer um, is something you should be doing. Um, it is why you will continue to see virtual touring as an important resource for you and for them because it's just it's the accessibility factors is, is so important. Want to get to know the location of the college a little better? You could go to the Chamber of Commerce website in the area of the college and learn more about organizations as well as arts, culture, and entertainment in your prospective college home. Connecting with South alums will give you a unique and firsthand perspective of the college. As I mentioned, our alumni ambassadors contact me for making a connection. So just let me know what schools you want to make a connection with an alum and I'll get that information to you. By checking the admissions section of the college's website, you'll find out what the visit policy is for the college. Some offer in person, some are self guided. Some are open for outdoor touring with limited access to facilities and others are fully reopened. For in-person college visits, take notes, take pictures of things that interest you and excite you. That way you'll be able to reference these when writing supplemental essays. Remember, being organized is a big part of success in this process. Fall visits with college reps at Newton South are gonna take place from September to December this year. Um, this year it will be all in person. And I am going to publish those in Naviance where you also need to register. So you don't need to worry about how to register yet. We're gonna um, share detailed instructions with you uh, when you return to South in September. Okay, another fun activity. Um, that I came up with um, is through this book called College Match. Um, and the reason I picked this is that I was thinking something as expensive and important as selecting a college requires a commitment and investment of your time to process what you've researched. This document here, this worksheet here that you just click on that in that box, the College Fact Finder worksheet number eight, um, will help you organize your information from your research by college so you can compare. So basically going to give you like an Excel um, with certain topics that you can compare amongst institutions. Um, this particular worksheet is adapted from a book called College Match, a blueprint for choosing the best school for you, again by Dr. Stephen Antonoff. Um, and I, I think it's a great, great book if you could borrow it from a library or if you, you want to if you want to take, you know, if you want to buy it. Um, so as you consider the schools you've researched, I want you to think about the five points that I have here. One, use more than one source of information about the school. So not just the tour, but you'd want to have a tour and a review um, from a guidebook or some kind of publication. Um, two, Many tours and information sound the same, look for differences and note them. Think of the things that make you go, ooh, or ah, you know, that kind of stand out to you um, as you as you tour, as you're reading, doing research online. Um, those are the connections to the school that are gonna matter when, you know, schools are asking you why you wanna go to the school. It's not just why you wanna be there, but it's also, you know, what you're going to get out of it, what you're going to give to it, and how that college is going to make a difference. Um, realize at going into this process that there is no perfect school. You know, it's going to check a lot of boxes. The more research you do, you're going to find those schools that are going to connect to you, but there's not, it's not going to check all of your boxes. 
uh, number four, a good school is defined as what matches you best, right? It isn't what other people, where other people are applying or what other people say or other people's experiences. This is a very individual process. Number five, this process is not about getting into college. It is about finding a place where you will grow academically and personally. So completing the application. There's no rush to complete an application, but you should know that app applications are open now. You don't need your final list to begin filling in some of the basic information. Um, and this can be a real time saver um, to do and summer is the perfect time to do it. So if you're getting tired of doing research or doing the exercises, if you just wanna go in and create an account and start filling in some basic information that, that might be a, a nice way to break up um, some of the tasks. Uh, a majority of colleges in the US use the common application. The common application has been around for, I'd say a couple decades and um, it's all online. And basically you're gonna fill out information um, that every college needs to know. So your name, address, email, parent or guardian information, high school you attend, um, senior courses, that sort of thing. Just pretty much basic information. And it, it does alleviate the fact of you having to replicate that and do that many times. So it does save some time that way. Um, that's a common application. And then there is a common black college application as well, uh, which allows you to apply to any of the 61 participating um, historically black colleges and universities uh, that are member colleges for $20. Uh, you can select your top four choices and apply to as many as you like. Um, there's also the rule of thumb really is to select the application platform where the majority of your schools on your list are members. For most, that's gonna be the common application. Um, I often recommend if you're applying to a number of um, HBCUs or historically black colleges and universities that you consider applying using both the common black common college application and the common app. There are a few schools um, that accept only their application, which is available on their websites. That's why we're referring to school and system specific applications. This would be like University of California, um, their nine you know, UC campuses, they have one separate application. The Cal State universities, which there's more of, they have their own application separate from the UCs. Uh, the University of Texas, um, they, all of their schools um, have a separate application. So, um, so just to be aware that there's a variety of, of, of different types of platforms, but far and away, the common application is the most used. Um, so I put up a sample here of the topics on the common app and the other applications as well. So you can kind of basically see that profile is gonna be your basic information about yourself, name, birth date, address, that sort of thing. Family information, you're gonna have, there's gonna be a section on education, an optional se section on submitting test scores. Um, this would include um, both an SAT and ACT and possibly AP scores. There's an activity section, which is gonna serve kind of like a resume, but you know, it's just kind of, uh, they give you 10 places to put information, not that you have to have all 10 completed. And then a writing section, which would, would be your personal essay. As part of the application to a growing number of large universities, you may need to report your entire academic transcript. Some of these schools don't even want a copy of a transcript sent from, from Newton South to them. They want that information in, uh, entered by you um, either in the Common App or on a separate platform or portal. Um, Follow university directions carefully is what I would tell you. Um, and you will need to allow about an hour to complete this process. So you're gonna need 
the most up-to-date transcript that you have from, from Newton South um, with your final grades. Um, and, and then you're gonna input the information, including um, levels. Um, this might require a little bit more um, assistance um, from myself or a counselor um, in terms of interpreting um, the courses. Um, so if you wait to do this, many, many schools require that you apply first and then they give you access to the self-reported academic record. Um, it's like an add-on to the common application or their application. So um, if you need some extra assistance, you can, you can you know, reach out at that point when you, uh, after you've submitted. But just know that it's a thing and it's a growing thing and um, it does just kind of add a little more time to you know, the application process. Okay. I wanna talk a little bit about essays um, as they are required at majority of colleges and, and hold a very important place in the college application process. Um, given that um, colleges have, uh, for the most part, um, gone to test optional um, for submitting test scores, um, essay writing and your feedback about yourself and your connection to the college matters more than ever. So um, if you click on these links, I'm not gonna do it, but if you click on the Common App Prompt and then Common Topics, it's going to take you to the Common Application Essay Prompts, um, which will be used for the class of 2023. Um, the Supplemental Essays, those um, we don't um, have available and nobody can see those on Common Application until after August 1st. So this, this link here is gonna show you, you know, what the, some of the common topics are for supplemental essays. Not all colleges have supplemental essays, but um, it's good just to get a sense of kind of what they're asking and why they might be asking that. So I think that um, this particular link could be very helpful to you. Um, some advice about essay writing, you know, essays should be written and revised a number of times. Um, the essay should be your voice, um, no one else's. This is your opportunity in the application to re reveal information about yourself that brings your application to life. Uh, reps can tell pretty quickly when a piece of writing has been manufactured by a more experienced writer, so please keep that in mind. Uh, limit the number of people reading and giving you feedback. Um, it's one of the things I always ask when I review essays for students is how many other people are looking at this. Uh, because too many opinions will confuse you. Um, and then you're starting to make decisions about your piece of writing based on what other people are saying. And again, then, then you're losing your voice and that could negatively impact the, the quality of the essay. Um, many stu students, I'll just say it straight out, they dread this part of the process, part of the application. Um, I challenge you to flip that, that and to embrace it as um, a way for you to kind of like create this statement of growth and a statement and understanding about yourself and the world around you. So kind of look at it as a chance to kind of just, it's kind of a capstone of, of your self-development up to this point. Um, it's gonna provide you the chance when you do write your essay to look at your past, your present and the future. So um, organization is very important. Pay attention to the suggested timelines um, that I've listed here. So um, in general, if you're thinking you're gonna apply early, so October, November, or December deadlines, you wanna aim to have your personal statement, which is just the general uh, college essay that the most colleges require. You wanna have that completed, right? Completed by September or October. If you're applying to colleges in October, November, or December and any supplements, so additional essays, if any, you wanna work on those in October and November. So obviously if you have a November deadline, you wanna have those done in October. If you have a December deadline, you wanna finish those in November, right? And then for winter deadlines or regular deadlines, you wanna have your personal statement completed in October or November and your supplements, you wanna complete those over the months of November, December, and January. All right, 
So I um, want to talk a little, I mentioned a little bit about test optional and standardized testing. Um, you know, we learn through this past year's class um, when it comes to test optional that um, not submitting test scores does not hurt you. But if your test scores are within the college's averages or above their averages, your test scores can definitely help you. And that's a question we always get, like, should I send, should I not send? Um, it's best to discuss this with your counselor or me before you're deciding whether to send or not. Um, it's possible that you might send test scores to some of your schools and not send them to other schools. So that's a good conversation to have um, in the fall, particularly if you have fall deadlines, um, if you're done testing. Uh, in general, I advise college bound students to take either the SAT or the ACT two times. Um, and this is due to the fact that um, colleges do super score both the SAT and the ACT. And what that means is that they're going to take your highest set of scores um, from however many times you've taken. So taking it once, you know, it's not going to really benefit you for super scoring. But if you take it twice, there's always that chance that if you improve in one or both, one or one of the areas that you can increase your score overall. Um, so registration for um, the August um, SAT is going to happen in um, late June to early July. It hasn't um, come out as of today, which is um, mid June. Um, but look for it in late June to early July to register for. SAT and registration for the July ACT is going on right now. So um, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you also should note that Newton South does not um, offer the SAT in August and Newton North, which does ACT does not offer the July ACT, but other local schools do. So um, just so that you're aware of that. And then just in terms of the slide, when you download the, um, the PowerPoint, you'll be able to click the link here and see all the schools that are, are test optional. But for the most part, all of them are. Um, it's always good to double check the college's websites um, just to verify um, what, their, what their policy, admissions policies are. Okay, another aspect of the college application process is um, recommendations, specifically teacher recommendations. Um, you want to be sure to ask um, two academic teachers from this year, from your junior year, to write your college recommendations before you leave on June 24th, okay? Um, and then in addition to those teachers, your counselor will write a statement for you. Uh, you don't need to ask them, they just will. Um, but what they're going to ask you to complete is this thing called a senior information sheet right here. And again, in the PowerPoint, when you download it, you can get the link um, and you will be able to um, you know, complete that and get that to your counselor so they can write your recommendation. Um, I, would, I would say the senior information sheet could be really helpful to do as an exercise again in kind of self-reflection. Um, after you do the exercises that, we, that I shared in the, in the beginning of this um, presentation, um, doing the senior information sheet um, could be a nice way to kind of um, reflect on um, where you, you've been, where you're going um, before you even start doing your college essays. So um, what I would suggest is, you know, keep, you know, write this up, answer the questions, save it so you have a copy of it um, to refer to when you're working on your essay. Um, one other note about recommendations is that um, colleges will often take um, a, th a third recommender. Um, and this is like outside of your academic teachers and counselors. So this would be one other person that um, can share, reveal information about you that is different than what an academic person is going to, to share. Um, it could be somebody that, or somebody that's a supervisor at work. It could be a course that you took um, over the summer. It could be, you know, from a lab or um, a volunteer organization, uh, but somebody who's seen you in a different light other than as a student, perhaps. 
So just kind of think about that, particularly in summer, if you're doing something um, and you feel like you have a good relationship and you can ask and you feel like you've contributed really nicely to the organization or to the um, place where you're, you're working or volunteering, you know, maybe ask them if they'd be willing to write a recommendation. We'll share with you when you come back in September how to go about um, getting that to your colleges. So it's not a, a big deal. Um, just want to talk about college affordability and understanding and knowing the cost of college before you apply. Um, most students and families, um, college education is a huge, big financial investment. Um, there is a good chance that you may want or need to get additional degrees like a master's or other professional designations. And for those reasons, understanding the costs associated with a bachelor's degree really matters. Um, every college is required to provide a calculation of their net price for all prospective students. That's what this is called the net price calculator. A college's net price is its attendance costs that students and families need to pay out of pocket or through student loans. It's calculated as the college's total cost, including tuition, room and board, and books. Um, and this is minus any grants and scholarships for which you um, are eligible or received. Um, the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA um, always opens on October 1st. Um, be open October 1st. Um, you wanna select the academic year 22-23 you'll be going to college uh, in 23. Um, you are going to be using the tax year 2021. So all the information is going to be based on your 2021 um, tax information for you and your family. And you're going to look for a college financing evening that we usually conduct um, every September. So we haven't had that in person for quite a while. So I'm hoping that will happen this year. Um, there is um, a, an additional um, financial aid form um, that some very um, expensive and um, selective schools use, and that's called the CSS profile. Usually private institutions um, require this. And um, not only do they require the CSS profile, which is more detailed um, application and information on your, your um, family's you know, income and assets, um, they also require the FAFSA. So you need to do both of those forms. Um, it, the CSS profile calculates need in a different way than the federal formula. Uh, and usually those deadlines to submit uh, are tied to the application. So if you have a November 1 deadline, you're applying to a school for financial aid, the CSS profile um, and the FAFSA deadline would also be November 1st. Um, scholarships, we get a lot of scholarships um, that, that I uh, list under the tab. Um, it's under the tab colleges under scholarship and money in Naviance, and most of those um, really don't get going until December through April of your senior year. Um, I do send out a weekly email reminder with new scholarships um, starting in, in December, so be on the lookout for that. But um, being informed is, uh, being an informed consumer is a very important part of this, this process. Um, and then just coming, coming to an end here, I wanted to share some of my go-to resources um, that I usually recommend and, and use the most. Um, and each of these is linked up to these particular um, topics. So any U US research universities or campus tours, uh, if you're interested in information on accelerated medical programs, you just have to click that um, and it will take you right to that. But this is a nice cross section for both, um, you know, just college research as well as um, statistical data. If you're interested in like statistical data, college results is really good. Um, college data is really good for statistics, for lists, you know, College Express, um, if you're interested in honors program. So have fun kind of taking a look at all of those, those online tools. Um, and then some of my favorite uh, resources for college affordability, um, you know, are listed here again. Just click on the, the link, the name, and that'll take you right to 
um, that particular piece of information. At Newton South, um, these are some of the resources that um, I recommend um, right off the bat. Um, the College Planning Guide is uh, actually on the College and Career Center website. Um, and that looks like this. I will click there and hopefully get in there. There we go. So the College and Career Center webpage, you can either just Google it or you can access it from the main Newton South um, webpage under counseling and then you'll find the College and Career Center webpage. Um, this is kind of my go-to for information for everybody. Um, and so I would highly recommend that you kind of take a look at that. Here's the information on the junior college planning series that we were doing. Um, the college planning guide is hopefully here. I hopefully still have it here. It would be here. I'll put it back up. Oh, here it is right here. Learn everything you need to know about applying to college with South's college planning guide. All right. So that has soup to nuts, everything that you need to know about um, or questions about applying to college. Um, so I would recommend that, um, again, it's like 100 pages. Do you have to sit and <laughs> read through it? No, but pick a chapter, pick a chapter on, you know, standardized testing or pick a chapter on applications or pick a chapter on, you know, gap year, whatever it might be, you can kind of take a look and, and, and get some good information. Um, the NSHS Writing Center can be very helpful when you're working on drafts of your essays or your supplemental essays. So I highly recommend them as well as your own English teachers. Um, you can look forward to senior seminars, usually within the first couple of weeks, like the second week of school, the latter part, we, we start seminars with seniors where we talk about, you know, kind of the how to's and the nuts and bolts of applying to college. Um, we often, as I said, have a financial aid evening in um, September, ahead of the October 1 deadline, October 1 release of the FAFSA. And then you can look forward to in-person college visits starting on September 19th, and those are gonna go through December 2nd. Okay, so just to summarize all of this information, um, first, I want you to reflect. I want you to take time to get to know what you want from attending college and, and a college education. I want you to create and, and, and determine what qualities matter at college to develop a list of up to 20 schools. So creating your list. From that list, you're gonna research, you're gonna take time, you're gonna put the effort in, but you're gonna try to enjoy this process of getting to know about your college options, right? This is, this is all real positive stuff. Like what is your next step? going to be? What is it going to look like, right? What can it look like? It doesn't have to be stressful. Number four, you're going to actually start working on your college application this summer, and you're going to create an account, and you're going to look at most likely the Common Application Coalition is no longer, so that is, I'll fix that, so that's not in there anymore. Um, the Common Black Application, and then system or college specific applications like the University of California, Texas application. So you can actually complete those. Number five, you're gonna write and revise college essays. So um, there's, a, there's a resource called the College Essay Guy. Many of you might have already registered for his boot camp, which was held the end of May. Um, but if you haven't, um, you can still go onto his website and look at some of his free resources. He has some great free resources and exercises that he actually used in the boot camp, um, and uh, that can get you going just in terms of helping you brainstorm a topic. Um, he also has information on how to write supplemental essays, as well as specifically any University of California um, applications. They have a separate set of questions called personal insight questions. There's eight of them, you pick four. Um, he has, a, has some free resources on that as well. And then the last thing I'd recommend, recommend is organizing. So gathering your college specific information in a document, it could be an Excel, some people like folders, some people do notebooks um, with admissions requirements, what the deadlines are, 
and what your login information is. And having that central that you can refer to is really important because a lot of people, including me, forget login information. So you, the more organized you can be, the better, the better you'll do in the process. And if you need help organizing, know that um, I do work with students um, sometimes on a weekly basis, just to kind of be sure they're on track with their tasks. You know, when you come back in the fall, sometimes I meet with students every other week. So that's a possibility too, to help you. So these aren't like, you know, like you do one thing and then it, it is sort of a sequ sequential in terms of like, ideally I'd like for you to kind of follow one through six, you know, one through five, but you know, you will go back and forth between like these, these steps and these tasks, right? So like you might learn something about a school that here, which then has an impact on your list. You might remove a school because you researched something and found something out about another school and then you add that school. So, you know, there's some flow here as well, but this will give you kind of a, uh, um, a blueprint for how to how to move forward and, and use the, the time you have over the summer. And that's what I got folks. So I'm just gonna end it here and tell you that I am available for email over the summer, but I do not check email frequently. Okay, so you can send me an email, but only if you understand I may not get back to you for, you know, an unspecified time. Um, but but know that I, I am, you could send me an email if you needed to. Um, and definitely when you get back in September, I hope you'll come and, and see me and um, we can work together with your counselors to, you know, kind of help create a really um, personal and um, smooth plan for you um, for whatever that next step after after high school is going to be. So with that, I'm going to wish you a very safe and a very restful summer. And um, this should be up on the College and Career webpage um, very soon. So thanks for stopping by and be well.